This video is all about learning 3CAD from the ground up. We're going to be using, in my opinion, one of the most powerful and intuitive versions of 3CAD. We're going to cover everything that I wish I knew when I was learning 3CAD, and we're going to primarily focus on 3D print design. What's up? I'm Jonathan, and welcome to Maker Tales, where I'm sharing my maker journey to help you go further in yours. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to never miss an opportunity to keep making. This video is sponsored by Thangs.com. This video is all about getting a foundational understanding of FreeCAD as well as a preliminary understanding of CAD design itself. Now, we're not going to be using the main branch of FreeCAD. We're going to be using something called Link Stage 3, also known as Real Funders version or branch of FreeCAD. You might be wondering why, and I have an entire video explaining that here or down in the description, but in a nutshell, currently, FreeCAD has some pretty nasty bugs in it that really make the learning curve so much harder to learn. So I thought, let's go ahead and use the most powerful and intuitive version of FreeCAD so we can really just get on with making things within FreeCAD instead of dealing with the bugs within it. Now, that does mean that this course eventually will become outdated. So keep a note of the top pinned comment because I'm going to go ahead and update that comment once I've created a whole entire course that's going to go with a new version of FreeCAD. Now, this here is the first 3D printed project that we're going to go and create within FreeCAD. This lovely little box with this lovely little lid. Now, we're going to do this both through parametric and direct modeling. And if you have no idea what that means, don't worry, we're going to cover that in this video. But the key thing here is, is I'm going to show you every single little nut and bolt of FreeCAD till we get to that end result, which means you're going to be able to get on with much more complicated designs much quicker. With that all said, let's get on and let's learn FreeCAD. As I've just mentioned, we're going to be using Real Thunder's version of FreeCAD, so you don't really download it over from FreeCADweb.org. However, this website is still useful, especially for that donation button, because a donated and supported FreeCAD is a better FreeCAD overall, and their community tab right here, especially their form. What we're really interested in is this here. This is the GitHub of Real Thunder, his release page, and the link is down in the description. You're going to scroll down to this lovely list of downloads right here. And what you're looking for is a stable version for your system. So for me, on a Windows computer, it's this right here. I will click that and let that download. While that's downloading, I think it's only fair to mention that if you're appreciating all the hard work that Real Thunder is putting into this, consider supporting him on his Patreon page. With that said, now it's downloaded. Let's go ahead, unzip the file that we get, which gives us all this lovely files right here. And what we're looking for is this run FreeCAD. Of course, you can go ahead, right click it, create a shortcut, put that shortcut wherever you want. But in essence, all you have to do is double click this, and this is gonna open the FreeCAD link branch version. And here we are within Real Thunder's version of FreeCAD. It might look completely different for you depending on your screen resolution, as this is how it's gonna look like on a 4K screen. It's just one of the things of FreeCAD. It has some really good things about the UI, and some also some really not great things. I understand it might look completely alien and completely overwhelming. And don't worry, for now, I really want you to sort of ignore everything, as we need to do a whole bunch of quality of life changes within the preferences. So let's go ahead and do all of those right now. Head over to Edit, and then Preferences. Here, get this at a nice comfy space so you can see it all. Fantastic. And let's start with units. For those of you who want to work in the Imperial system, here it is. Go ahead, change it, hit apply, and then we'll go back to the general tab. Here, we're going to change a couple of things. We're going to start with a toolbar. I'm going to go with extra large for a 4K screen. I'm going to hit apply and you'll see we now have extra large icons. I'm also going to change my tree view icon size to 25. I'm going to change my tree view font size to 15. And lastly in here, I'm going to also change this thing that says startup. Instead of going to this place called the start, I want to go to this place called the part design workbench. Don't worry, I understand you have no idea what I'm saying right this minute. It'll all make sense in just a little bit. So click on that, hit apply, and now we're going to go over to display. So over in display, we're going to go and change our anti-aliasing that right this minute is set to none. We're going to set this either to four or eight. It's up to you. I'm going to go for eight, but just be aware, a little pop-up will come up now. It's just letting us know that we need to restart FreeCAD, which we will do 
once we've done all these little setting changes. So hit OK, and now let's go and change our marker size. I'm going to go for 15, as I find that's what works well on a 4K screen. I'm just going to change my pick radius to 10, as I find that is the one that's most comfortable for me. From here, I'm going to hit Apply, and I just want to mention a couple of things here. Within Colors, here is where you change the background color of FreeCAD. So you can change the gradient color itself or turn it into just one solid color in case you want to do that. Let's just quickly touch on navigation. It's a little bit of a controversial one because I'm not going to be teaching you CAD navigation. Now, if you're dead set on learning CAD navigation, I've created a video of that one and it's down in the description. So head over there right now or what I'm going to show you in this video is Blender navigation. Now, hold tight. The reason why is I find that Blender and FreeCAD put together are the killer combo for 3D print design. With that now done, I'm going to hit apply. And I just want to quickly mention one thing here in the general tab. You might have seen a whole bunch of people with some really cool or strange themes of FreeCAD when you've been looking online. Well, this here where it says style sheets, that is how they've gone ahead and done that. So you can go over, put on this pro dark, hit apply, you'll see everything's super dark. There's also this other one called behavior dark that is this sort of bluish one. Now, personally, I don't use these as I find the colors can go a little bit weird at times. So I'm going to go with the no style at all. Okay, now that we've done that, we need a couple of extra little settings here, but we have to go somewhere else for that. So I'm going to hit OK. Then up at the top here where it says start, just go into that drop down and go to the part design little menu here. Click in there. It will make sense what we're doing in a moment. But for now, go back into your edit and back into your preferences. And you'll see we have some more settings here. Let's start with part design. So within part design, some people like to turn these three on here. We will probably turn this on, but a little bit further on down in the line. And I'm going to go over to shape view. I'm going to change this from 28 to 6. I'm also going to change my shape appearance here from my line width to 6 and my vertex size to 9. Again, this is because I'm using a 4K screen and I just find that I need to make all these bigger so that we can all see what's going on. I'm going to hit apply on that. I'm going to go to this sketcher tab. Now, I understand you don't know what sketcher is, but trust me, you'll understand everything that's going on really soon. I want to have a grid when I'm in this sketcher space. So I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to hit apply. And then I'm going to go over to display. In display, I want to change my font size to something pretty big for everyone here. So I'm going to go with 40. You might want to go with 30 or 25, depending on the resolution of your screen. And here on the view scale ratio, I'm going to go with 2. And then I'm going to hit apply on that. Just a quick note that here where it says colors within the sketcher environment, which you will see soon, this is where you change all of those colors. In the future, I'll be doing an entire video showing you how I like to change all of the colors here in FreeCAD for my own personal needs. But for now, I'm going to leave everything as default as possible. Right now that we've done all those changes, let's hit apply, hit OK, close FreeCAD and restart it. Now, a quick message from today's sponsor, Thangs. Now, hold on. Before you skip, trust me, there's something I want you to check out in here. Thangs is the fastest growing 3D model community with close to 3 million free models to download. One of my favorite things of Thangs is their no app needed free augmented reality feature, where you can literally check out 3D models in the real world with pretty much just one click on your phone. So be sure to give it a go with the example file linked down in the description to see what the end result of this free CAD crash course is going to look like in front of you. And here we are within that freshly restarted free CAD and everything has changed. Jonathan, have you just broken my free CAD? Everything's grayed out. What's going on? This is a very strange place you have me in right this minute. Don't worry. This is exactly where we want to be. This is somewhere called the part design workbench. And it's usually where you want to go ahead and start all your 3D print designing. So to understand exactly what I mean by a workbench, let's go up here to the top where it says part design. Click that drop down once again, and you're going to see there's a whole bunch here. Let's just quickly zoom in and understand what this is. FreeCAD works with this idea of workbenches. Each one of these is something called a workbench. 
Each workbench has been designed and coded up for a specific task with tools and features for that task. So we started in the start one. And as you can imagine, the start one is for starting in. We're going to go and look at a whole bunch of these, but for now, let's just go and keep things simple. Let's go back to the start one to just go full circle so you understand what's going on. So we'll click on the start one, and you'll see we are now back at the start. However, I don't want to show you this start page that much because we're not going to really usually start here. Down here where it says the start page, this is sort of like the splash screen of the start workbench. Usually down here, this is the file name of what's active within FreeCAD. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to go back into part design as if we've just started up FreeCAD once again. So how do we get started from this point? Well, it's one of the strange things of FreeCAD. Technically, there is no file open right this minute, and this is why everything is grayed out. So let's go ahead and create a document within FreeCAD. As you can imagine, up here on the top left, this is the create a new empty document. We'll click this, and you'll see all of a sudden, everything is active once again. And down here, it now says unnamed, because we now have an unnamed document. So take a look here on the left hand side. This thing is called the combo view. It's a very important space. And over next to here, we've got model and task. Let's go over to model. This here is something called the tree view, also known as the hierarchy or the timeline. It has many, many different ways of calling it. But for now, we're just going to call it the hierarchy or the tree view. You can see we have unnamed here because within our application, we have the document unnamed open. Let's go and make a change here by saving this document to see that change. So let's go file, save as, or you can go with control S. I'm gonna go ahead and save my file as getting started. With that now saved, you can see we have a file here called getting started open within FreeCAD. So let's talk a little bit about the UI right this minute. So when we're up here on the combo view, you see there's this little hand. That's because all these windows are movable. You can go ahead and move them to either side, have them snap, you can go up, down, wherever you want. You can even close this. Now be careful. You've just gone ahead and deleted one of the most important things within FreeCAD. How do you get this back? Go over to view, and here where it says panels, you'll find the combo view. So click that on, and you'll see that you'll be able to just move this back into its place. Now let's quickly touch on the toolbars. All these toolbars here are sort of sectioned out into these collections of tools. And every single collection of tool has this sort of dotted line right here. This dotted line is the grab area to be able to move these tools wherever you want within your toolbar. And as you can see, you can just go ahead and move this wherever you want. You can have it something like that, or put that back to where it was, or whatever you want. One really interesting thing is that you can grab these and move them off into the side as well. It's one of the great things about FreeCAD UI is that it really is personalized for your own workflows as much as you want. So I'm just going to go and move this last one here, and I'm happy with that. So let's go ahead and start making something, right? Yes, absolutely. But first, we need to really understand how we should start making something. In many, many videos, Lots of people just jump into straight into this thing called creating a body. In reality, this is going to trip you up in the long term. What you really want to do is you have a file here. This file can do anything within FreeCAD. So let's go ahead and let FreeCAD know what we're wanting to make. We're wanting to obviously make a part of some type. And that's exactly it. This here is create a part. So we'll create a part within FreeCAD. Then within our part, we can have many things inside of a part. But what I want in this part is I want a body. I want a 3D thing. So I'm going to create a body within my part. This means that I can have multiple bodies inside of one part. It has a lot to do with this whole idea of an origin. And the origin is the 3D space that's sort of assigned to each thing in here. It's quite complicated and you'll get used to it with time. But for now, just remember that. Okay. Now, I'm not really seeing much on my screen right this minute. It's quite boring. So let's go ahead and see something. Within this body, you'll see that there's this little eye and the origin 001. Let's go ahead and click that eye next to it. And you can see we can now see the origin of the body. So the 3D space. So as you see, there's planes and there's axes associated to that body. 
Now another way of hiding and showing things is click it and then you can press the space bar to hide it and space bar again to show it. So let's move around within this environment. Again, I'm gonna be showing you Blender movement. If you want the CAD movement, it's down in the description. So to rotate around, we're gonna hold down the middle mouse button and that'll let you rotate around. It's a little bit strange because depending where your mouse is, that is sort of the rotation point. Now to zoom in, you can scroll in and scroll out, or you can hold down control, hold down the middle mouse button and move your mouse in and out. Lastly, to pan around, hold down shift, hold down control, and then you can pan around. But in reality, I don't really use that much movement. What I really like to use are these buttons here. These are quick movements. So this is the front view, top view, right view, back view, bottom, and side view. Now, on top of that, all of these have a lovely little shortcut. As you can see, this is number one, this is number two, number three, four, five, six, and this one is zero. So let's go through those. One, two, three, four, five, six, zero. What I usually do is I hit zero and then just rotate out a little bit to see my model. Now that we've really got to grips with sort of how this is looking like, let's talk about CAD design itself. But just before we jump into there, if you get yourself completely lost and you have no idea where you are, to get yourself back to fitting everything on the screen, up here, this lovely little button is fit whole content on screen. I like to also think of it as VF, which is view full, which is the shortcut for it. So let's get lost once again and hit VF and now we're viewing full. Lastly, there is one other way to move around, which is with this little cube here. This gizmo here can be quite useful, but I find that more than anything, it just sort of shows where you are. As you can see, you've got the top, front, side. If you want, you can click on one of these and it will snap to that rotation. You can do incremental movements to either side, as well as incremental rotations to either side, and there's a whole bunch of different ways of viewing. So orthographic, perspective, and isometric. With those covered, now let's talk about the fundamentals of what exactly is CAD design. So now take a seat back and let's have a little chat. When you first think of CAD style design, you probably think of technical drawings, and that's for a good reason, because everything is driven by numbers when it comes to computer-aided design. So let's take a look at one of these technical drawings. So we have one here. Now, what exactly do these technical drawings do? Well, what they're basically doing is defining the relationships of different features within a 3D object in a 2D space. Okay, with that knowledge place, then what exactly do the numbers do? Well, they're constraining where said features are. So constraining means we're very much telling it where it is and what it is and how it should be. So for instance, this hole here, we know needs to be 16 whatnots there, and it needs to be 37 whatnots over here, but there's nothing defining the diameter of it unless you realize that these are all the same one, and there you have a diameter of six whatnots. All right, now we understand the idea of the sort of the technical drawing and what the numbers do. Now I just wanna quickly talk about the way that you can do CAD modeling. Now, CAD modeling can be done in two ways. One is you go ahead and do something called direct modeling. So direct modeling is where you go ahead, you use this technical drawing, you say, okay, well, this has a base length of 45 and you type in a dimension of 45 there. And this is width is 32, that is 32, fantastic. And I see, then you go ahead and create some other thing and you realize that this is, where's the thickness here of this thing? Oh, it's not fully defined, but then you realize the, the thickness of something and go from there. That is called direct modeling, where every single number is put in individually. And then if you ever wanted to change that number, you have to go back to that number and change that. But for instance, maybe you wanted to change the diameter of this one here. You change this one, but now you also have to change the other ones. That is direct modeling. The next one is called parametric modeling. And this is the real powerhouse tool when it comes to computer-aided design. Basically, it, you still use numbers, except you link them together. So you create something called a variable. So we're gonna say that this six is a variable and we're gonna call it 
um, small holes. So these small holes are set to six, and we're going to use the variable small holes to say, hey, you, when we say what diameter you are, you are a small hole diameter, you are a small hole diameter, and you are a small hole diameter. That means that if we ever go ahead and change the idea of what the variable of that small hole is from six to three, all of these will change at the same time. That there is parametric modeling. And of course, you go ahead and link this up with this other hole up here, as well as with the thickness. And that fundamentally is parametric modeling, where you link up features together so that one dimension controls many different features on a model. Now that we understand CAD design and we know the importance of technical drawing, let's go ahead and create our own technical drawing. To do this, what you do is you create a sketch, a drawing within FreeCAD. So right here next to our body, we have the sketch. Now be sure that you're on the correct body. So here you can see that this body is active because it's bold. If you double click it, it will be inactive and you'll see that it's no longer bold. So I'm gonna double click it, make sure it's bold, and then from here, I'm going to also hide the origin because usually you don't actually have the origin visible when you're doing this. So let's click that create sketch button. And it's going to ask you, okay, where do you want to create this sketch? What flat surface, what plane are you wanting to reference? Well, I'm wanting to reference the X, Y plane. So top down. So I'm going to left click on there. And you can see there's a whole bunch of more options here. Don't worry about any of those for now. We're keeping things super simple. With that now selected, hit OK, and you're going to see everything changes. Where on earth are we now? This looks very overwhelming. Don't worry. This is a place that you're going to learn to love. This is called the Sketcher Workbench. And it's honestly where you're going to be spending the majority of your time. Just very quickly, the first thing that you're going to notice is you have these lines here and this red dot. This is the center of the origin, and these are your axes on that plane. You can move around in here just like every other 3D space, and this is a 3D space. So be careful. You can rotate in it very easily and get yourself completely lost, and then you have no idea which way is up and which way is down apart from seeing that cube. But how do we get ourselves back to the right orientation? Well, you're going to look for this button right here. This will center up your sketch once again to the right orientation. Now, before we continue, let's go ahead and sort out our toolbars, just so we have this in a place that sort of works well for us. I'm gonna move this one over there. I'm gonna move this one down here. I'm also going to move this one down over here. I'm actually gonna just move this last little tiny thing over here, because that's gonna let us see all the tools all at one go, and that's what I'm very much wanting. So we're not going to go too deep into this. We're just going to do very top level understanding of what's going on here, because in the next coming videos, we're going to go really, really deep into the Sketcher Workbench, as honestly, it's probably the most important space for 3D print design and in CAD design in general. So we're going to take a look and we're going to create a simple little cube. So we're going to click this button right here, we'll just create a rectangle. You click this, and then you can just go ahead and left click, and then do another left click, and that will create this drawing. I'm going to right click to cancel the tool. Now let's take a look at exactly what's going on. Let's just zoom in quickly, and you can see that we have these red dots, these red lines, and these white lines, and a whole bunch of things have happened here on the left hand side. We can all agree that there are four lines here, correct? And that's why there are four lines here. Now, what on earth are these constraints? And um, what's this target thing and that line thing? Well, we've got them up here. That little target thing, this is called a coincident constraint. You can also think of this as sort of like joining, but don't really think about joining because you don't really join things within FreeCAD. What you do is you constrain things together. And then we also have this here, which is our vertical constraint, and this here, which is our horizontal constraint. Let's explore this a little bit more. So over here, we have our constraints. If you click on one of them, it's gonna show you where it is. As you can see, that little dot turned green. We can go ahead and right click it and go deactivate. Now with this deactivated, we can actually pull these apart. However, if we reactivate this constraint, 
you will see it will bring it together. That's because the coincident constraint is keeping those two lines together. Something else, if we go ahead and deactivate that once again, and we'll find the constraint that's doing the top line, which is constraint number five, as you can see, it's gone green. I'm also going to go ahead and deactivate this one. So what do you think is gonna happen now? Well, now we can go ahead and make this line not horizontal because the horizontal constraint has been deactivated. Right, take a look at what's going on here though, because right this minute it's saying we are under constrained, the sketch has seven degrees of freedom. What on earth are degrees of freedom and what is this constrained thing? What exactly is happening here? What FreeCAD is asking you is, I don't know what's going on here. I need to know exactly what this sketch is, where it is and how it should relate within the 3D space. And that's what all these constraints are. So if we were to go ahead and activate that constraint and then activate this one as well, you can see now we only have four degrees of freedom. So we've got this one up and down, left and right. Okay, makes sense. So what's really happening here? Well, FreeCAD has no idea where this is and what size it is. That's what's happening. So let's go ahead and tell FreeCAD, hey, your center origin point of this plane for this object should be coincident with the bottom left-hand side of my cube. So we select both of those, and then we'll click this little target thing, which is the coincident constraint, and it will make that point coincident. As you can see, we are now only have two degrees of freedom. So we've got this one here and this one right here. So let's go ahead and constrain those. Now to constrain these, the way that I'm gonna go ahead and do it is through doing dimensions. So we're gonna dimension here. So I'm gonna select this line here. I need to put a dimension here. Let's take a look at our, all of our constraints. So here we have geometric constraints and here we have dimensional constraints. So this one here looks like what I'm looking for, a horizontal dimensional constraint. So I'm gonna click on this and now we have a horizontal constraint. I'm gonna set this to 50 because we're gonna do some direct modeling right this minute. We'll hit okay and there we have it. That's now being constrained there. As you can see, we now only have one degree of freedom left. Now, let's just say we had a whole bunch of stuff here. We wanted to find out where this one degree of freedom is left, where you can click on this one degree and it will select what exactly is still not constrained. And what it's telling you is, hey, this line here can still go up and down. What exactly do you want me to do with this? So as you can imagine, we're gonna go ahead and do another dimensional constraint. The way we'll do it is we're gonna select this point down here, this point up here, and instead of clicking the button, let's start doing some shortcuts. So this is vertical constraint, which would be a shift V. And there we go, a vertical dimensional constraint. I'm gonna set this one to 50. Now, did you realize what's just happened? Our sketch just went green. So let's redo that. I'm gonna click this, delete it. We don't have a fully green sketch right this minute. It is slightly green, but not really. We'll go here, shift V, it's now completely green. This means that we have a fully defined or fully constrained sketch, which means that FreeCAD now knows what size it is and where it belongs within the 3D space absolutely. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and click close and this will take us back to the part design workbench. Now that we're in the part design workbench, you can see we have this lovely sketch here. If we left click off, it will unselect. If you've left click one of the edges, it will select one edge. And if you select it again on that selected edge, it will select all of it. With it all selected and the sketch selected over here, let's go ahead and do something with this sketch. Let's go and turn this into some 3D geometry. The way you do this is by extruding it or another way of calling it is padding it, making it thick. The button you're looking for here is right there. So we'll click on this here and you'll see that we get a whole bunch of options and everything's changed. Don't worry about it. We're keeping things really simple. This here that says length, we're just gonna go with 50. Hit okay, and you'll see that we now have this lovely little cube, right what we were expecting. Great. So let's take a look at really what's going on here because all of a sudden your sketch has disappeared. We have this cube and you might be a little bit lost in what's going on. Well, what we have, is our document that has a part in it. This part has a bit of 3D geometry on it 
that's called a body. Now this body has a pad, so we're making something thick, we're extruding something. But this pad, with this drop down, is being driven by this sketch. Which means, we can double click onto this sketch, we can change the numbers in here, so I'll double click on here, change this to 30, I will double click on this one here, and I'll change that to 30. Again, this is direct modeling, there's no sort of magic number controlling this. We can hit close, or we can hit escape, and this will take us back. Now, be aware when you hit escape, it's gonna take you to the task, not to model. I like to keep the model up, and you can see it's gone ahead and changed our cube. Now, I wanna change the pad to go with 30 as well. So, I'm gonna click on the pad, double click the pad, and now here I can change that number back to 30. As you can see, that's how you can really have a lot of power here with direct modeling. Now, parametric is a completely different ball game, but we're gonna to get to that further on down the line. At this point, I want to create a hole up on this top surface. To do that, we're going to create another sketch. Now, instead of going sketch and selecting a plane and all the rest, I'm going to select the face that we want the sketch to be on. So I'm selecting this, which means we are doing a direct reference on a face. And now when we hit sketch, it's gone ahead and said, okay, you had that face selected, which lets me know that you're wanting to create a sketch on that face. So now that we're here, let's go ahead and create a little circle here. As you can imagine, right here, this is a nice little circle drawing tool. We're just gonna click once, pull out, click again, right click to cancel the tool. Now we have three degrees of freedom. What are they? Well, we've got this moving up, down, left and right, and we also have our diameter of this circle. So let's go ahead and just do some very quick constraining here. I'm gonna go from the origin point to the center of my circle. Remember the shortcut here, shift H for horizontal dimensioning. I'm gonna set this to 15. Nothing magical right this minute. We'll just stick that with just 15. We'll go again from here to there. Shift V for vertical. We'll go 15 and hit okay. Now. We're still not quite there. We still have one degree of freedom, as we can tell, and this needs to have its diameter set because we're working with a circle here. Let's take a look at our dimensional constraints. I'm not really seeing one. Well, there is a radius here, and there's also a little drop down. Here is our diameter constraint. So let's click on this one, click on our circle, and we'll set this to 10. Hit OK, and now I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the sketch. All right, so you can see we have that lovely little sketch on the top of our cube here. Now let's go ahead and make a hole with it. Let's take a look at the tools. All right, there's this one with the hole in it. Not quite. This is a different type of hole and we'll get to there eventually. What we're actually wanting to create is something called a pocket, which is right next to it. So with your sketch selected that has that circle, let's go ahead and do a pocket operation. If we click on this, you will see it goes red. Now, this red is sort of silhouetting what exactly is about to happen. So it's gonna go in by five millimeters. I don't want it to go in by five millimeters. I want it to go all the way through. So I'm gonna go all through. Now, this means it would cut any geometry that is past here as well. Maybe that's not quite what I'm looking for. I want it to go all the way through to a face that I select. So I'm gonna go up to face instead. Now, it's flashing at me here saying, no face selected. So we've gotta let it know what face exactly we're talking about. I'm gonna say this face right there. And as you see, it's gone ahead and done that. I'm gonna hit okay, and there we have it. We've gone ahead and we've done a lovely hole through our cube right there. And this here is a perfect place to stop, as you now have a foundational understanding of FreeCAD and exactly what is going on. In the next coming videos, we're going to really understand the Sketcher Workbench, as this truly is like the key place to really get a grip with FreeCAD first. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and look at more and more complicated tools and workflows till you're able to master 3D print design within FreeCAD. And there you have it. You now have a foundational understanding of FreeCAD along with all the whole bunch of preference changes and you understand sort of what FreeCAD is starting to expect from you. This is also very much the backbone of CAD design itself. 
A huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome and it means the world to me to have your support. It really does make Maker Tales possible. And if you're enjoying what I'm making here and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. Don't forget that we also have a Discord and that is linked down in the description. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.